Welcome, everybody. It's Wednesday, August 23rd, and we're back for another Node Operator Roundtable. Today, I will be leading the call to talk about planning for the the big consensus upgrade, um, which we're targeting for in uh, early December, December 6th. Um, we've got a schedule here I'll share. Thank you, Brian, for preparing this. And maybe a good place to start is where are we at currently in the schedule? Talk about some of the developments since our last call and uh, and then open up the, the floor for questions around any uh, any topics that there is some clarity, more clarity required, in particular in the perspective of node operators in operating this new consensus mechanism. Uh, let me just share my screen here. So it's to August 23rd, here we are. A couple milestones uh, targeted for today to message developers and VPs on the, um, I guess the depreciation of, or disabling of deferred transactions. Um, is, yeah, I can, is that, is the, yeah, do you want to speak maybe a little bit to the that status? Yeah, I can give an update there. So I don't have an update as of today as to when uh, this article will be published, but the as of yesterday evening, my uh, the intention was to publish a announcement uh, today at some point. So I still expect that to be the case, although I'm going to be um, working on the updates uh, after this call. So um, anyway, I drafted an announcement uh, with the help of uh, several folks internally and Brandon Espinoza and Arig and Kevin and, and others, and then also got feedback and input from um, uh, Daniel uh, and Matthew Darwin. Um, since they saw it, I did make some minor changes because we had a, a um, conversation about the actual rollout plan as part of 5.0, if you remember this deferred transactions disabling is uh, targeted for before 5.0, but then there's code changes targeted for 5.0 itself. So we had some more detailed conversation about that rollout plan and uh, realized that uh, some of the language was a bit too specific, uh, which we can get to later in the plan. So I, I made some minor changes in the, uh, in the article, but I anticipate for that to go live. As soon as it does, um, I'll start posting in appropriate telegram channels um just calling attention to that uh, it'll be posted as a blog post on uh, esnetwork.com and um of course if there's feedback or questions we can um you know make make updates or clarify in those channels uh what i would ask is that um folks help spread the message so you know reactions to call attention to it, sharing it in channels that I might have missed that are also appropriate, that sort of thing. This is, we need this to spread the message, not because it's, you know, an exciting marketing announcement, but because we need, you know, the community to rally and, and get something done. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's the status of that. I'll, uh, and then you notice the second one, message to BPs to disable um, on Jungle Kylan by the 1st of September actually runs through to the 1st of September because I'm going to sort of repeatedly ping there. So, And yes, this is what uh, Daniel has up on his screen is the sort of you know draft of what will be published as a, as a blog post. It includes a little bit of a, a history of um, why we're making the change, how we came to agreement about making the change, um, and then uh, clarity on schedule, right? And then instructions on how to actually execute your part. Well, not a lot of time. The, the call to action is September 7th for developers. That's a little more than two weeks, barely. 
yeah, yeah. this tight, which is why we want want the article going out today so that we can we can um yeah get that. and and can you speak a little bit to your distribution plan so you, you post a blog post and and you've identified public channels you'll be sharing that in uh, and I'll, and I'm guessing you know the the ENF Twitter all that sort of stuff um, yes um, um, well, so we haven't really specifically talked about posting on Twitter, but I, I expect that we do that. It's part of our standard um, strategy for for blog posts. Um, and then there there are a couple of you know, notable apps that that we have uh, sort of done some bespoke research into to see if they're using them um, that that do have some touch with deferred transactions. So we'll be doing some um, direct door to door. Direct reach outreach for them. So if there are any that others are aware of, um, you know, either bring it to their attention. Actually, do both. Bring it to their attention directly, and also bring it to our attention. Um, probably in the node operators uh, roundtable chat would be a good place to do that. Cool. And in addition to that, yeah, hundred um, percent will echo uh, if you can. Just help help. Um, magnify the message we'll we'll do all our all our retweeting and and sharing on our side i'll have a chat with i see dario's on the line um again i think this is a good opportunity to start warming up the eo support mailing list uh i'm not sure does enf have a, a mailing list that now too that are you guys sending any newsletters at this point that we should be starting to leverage for this stuff too or or um perhaps support is the is the the best source for now i you know i'm not really familiar with our or some capabilities there okay Thank you. okay have a newsletter or any email we're sending out on behalf of this cool so uh eo support again they they did a lot of this for the last upgrade we've got a a list of both app developers and exchanges um so we'll well, uh, and I see Dario's on the line. I'm not sure if you can speak to this or if I should maybe take this offline with Ralph. Um, I'll, give, I'll pause for a moment, give Dario a chance to, to speak up if he wants to. Um, yeah, I have to check with Randall, yeah. Randall, yeah, sorry. Uh, um, cool, cool. And I'll, I'll, I'll touch base with him. I'll, uh, Daniel, so far, have you guys been mm -hmm. um, great again? Sorry, uh, Daniel, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so far, have you guys been managing both the exchange lists and the top 21 or top 25 block producers to make sure they're all going to be running the 5.0 code right, and be ready by the time of the, uh, you know, the protocol flip over? Um, I, you guys did a really good job of managing that last year. Um, have, have you guys kind of taken that on along with EOS support again this year? I think, I don't know if my, in my internet or yours, I cut out a little bit there for me. I think the question was, uh, have we, I guess, started the community or do we plan to take on the, the role of, um, I guess, working with the block producers to make sure they're upgraded in time. Yeah, and the exchanges, because with the exchanges, we want to make sure that they can still send and receive. Similar to last time, um, with EO support, primarily helping to communicate DAP developers' exchanges, getting them aware. Um, there will likely be some support requirement that we can assist with. And on the BP side, um, just like, like we, we do with, with uh, most upgrades and peering and all that sort of stuff will coordinate with them through our, you know, the WeChat. And um, since the last upgrade, which is nice, we now have the monthly BP call too. So we good to get that on, on part of that agenda. And, uh, but yeah, the nation team or we'll check statuses and we'll have a go, no go call uh, just like we did with the last upgrade. Do you, we, do you plan on moving to the uh, GitHub boards that you ran last year in September? Would you be willing to do that? That was I thought that was super helpful. I lost you that second there at the last, but if uh, yeah, especially if if folks found that valuable, happy to um, 
get the GitHub board rolling again for this. I, I thought that was indispensable. I thought it was truly helpful for everybody to have a common place to see everything driving and we're running down the list. We're able to check stuff, track stuff. I think it just really helped us be extremely organized. Cool. Yeah. Happy to. So what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, do some work kind of transferring some of these milestones into the GitHub, making sure we are adding anything that's missing. Um, and yeah, we've got different views here. We can track, we've got, you know, we we're tracking this grid and there's new timeline views available now in, in GitHub since this last upgrade too, that maybe will be useful. Cool. Um, so yeah, happy to do that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so where we're at now, 23rd, like I, uh, Brian mentioned, we should be expecting, uh, the blog post sometime today. I'll, I'll touch base with Randall on getting the, the newsletters going out to the appropriate audience and we'll, uh, stand by folks on this call to try to amplify that as much as we can and share with, with anyone that we know. Um, just want to make sure I saw some message BPs disable EOS by the 14th. Um, we're, we're giving folks the seventh here, but I guess this is, yeah, well, it's, it's actually two, two separate things. So there's within the 14th that it actually completes look. that. Right. If you flip to back to the um, to the uh, draft for a second, you can see that what we're communicating there is like so. Jungle and Kylin, um, basically, both of them have a no earlier than and no later than. Uh, right. The idea there is that we don't want to, um, you know, we don't want folks to start uh, disabling this on EOS prior to application developers having a chance to, you know, remove their dependency on it. Um, and so that's why the, the date there for application developers precedes the, the start date for, uh, block producers on ES. Um, but then there's a period of time, uh, for block producers to, um, actually make the change. And, um, right. Yeah. And again, that's something we can help to coordinate in the background with, with all the VPs, um, both on jungle, Kylan and mainnet. So does anyone have any questions about this portion of the upgrade? Daniel, just, just to communicate expectations with the, uh, with the DAP developers themselves. Um, we're not anticipating there to be a major impact to the adapt developers on this deferred transaction thing. Um, now I, we're expecting that, that most, if not all developers that or all applications that are leveraging dis, uh, deferred transactions in one way or another already have a backup, um, methodology for handling because deferred transactions fail so frequently, right. um, so we're we're not anticipating there to be a, a a major implication there on the DAP side. Cool, that's good context. Um, yeah, you're right. We get given given the unreliability. I mean, one of the reasons we're dis dis disabling them is yeah, I'm sure few apps are using them, and if they are, they're ex they're ex they've got workarounds. So that's good. Uh, cool. Thank you. Moving on to um, maybe we want to talk about a little bit the instant finality stuff or just more broadly the leap 5.0 and its implications to node operators i understand there may be some um maybe some changes to how we operate as node operators that we need to consider maybe we need to change some of our processes um so wondering if i could if we could spend a little bit of time talking about We know the node operators here, and I'm not sure who might be the best one to queue up the, what do we know about what's changing with how, how we operate Leap 5.0? Yeah, I can, I can talk to that a little bit. Cool. Uh, 
So with Leap 5.0, we have new uh, finalizer keys, right? Uh, that are going to sign, essentially like sign our transactions that come through for the block producers. And uh, those are an important part of this new consensus algorithm. And so we have to make, there's some, I think that the, the change is there's some, you know, care and feeding for those finalizer keys. And one, one of the things... Uh, one of the scenarios that can happen is you might want to switch over to a backup a production node. And today, no producers have scripts that are sort of the where the, all of that's automated, but now you throw in these finalized keys and things change. And ideally, the way we want it to work is if you paused production node and pulled up a backup production node, you'd have a different finalizer key. Or if you had a node that went down and then you brought it back up again, you would probably want to use a different finalizer. And uh, the reason we want to do that is we just don't want to have any conflicts or deadlocks or replays of the same transaction coming through and you know putting the, the system in a bind where it's trying to unwind those old, old transactions to figure out what the heck's going on. I'd be oh, curious just... what the ramification of it happening is because like we know double signing does happen a lot even now. So will it really jack up the chain if you did? <laughs> no, it wouldn't really jack up the chain. But I think we're we're trying to get the best path forward. And then since so this is new. Right, we haven't te- we you know we haven't tested a hundred percent of all the scenarios of everything that happens under every- anything that happens un- under duress. Right, so again, we want to build in margins of safety. So no, it wouldn't really jack up the chain, but um, it might slow things down or take a take a while to get back to uh, consensus again if old messages are coming back in. Um, so I. This is something that I think we need to work on more, but I don't think we're going to get it in time for release, by release. And so there's going to be a period where we're just going to need to figure out the best way uh, to operate in the safest, most reliable manner that we can. And it's probably going to take some elbow grease um, as we look forward into the future of trying to make this easier to use and, uh, and either automate it ourselves or provide ways that entry points that make it easy to automate within the existing roles or responsibilities that you have as block producers and node operators. That's that's the short that's the short version of it. Thank you, Eric. Does anyone have any questions for Eric or or the ENF team on is there um, is there any uh, documentation of the draft at the moment, like anything that we can just read? No, is that is a good question though? Most for clarity, clarity, I'd have to say no. <laughs> how, how about a how about a photo of the whiteboard? <laughs> <laughs> we we I opened an issue for it. We we can document. Uh, I have question or thought on that. I mean, just knowing the way keys and key management and yeah, if you want different keys on different nodes, obviously it makes sense, but I'd be curious if it could have, you know, I love the permission structure and you can have multiple keys to a perm being that's such a key piece of, you know, antelope framework yeah. to have multiple keys and all right, whichever one primary, secondary, whatever. I don't, I don't know, but yeah, managing multiple keys on multiple servers is we actually tend to go the other way because to change keys, you got to wait for live. You got to, you know, get it to a working node that you may think is working, but really isn't. So we tend to, I know what the node's doing way more than I can control what the chain. So adhere to the chain. So we use the same key on a different server and just make damn sure not double reduce. But not everybody's like that. And that's kind of reactionary to the kind of broken framework we've always had. 
Yeah, well, well uh, the good news is things change. So in this case, you you won't have to wait for the the last irreversible block anymore. Like you could just switch out the keys, so it will work because it's a much more robust consensus algorithm. It works more at a transaction level than a block level. So uh, that that's the good news. I don't think you'll have to do as much of that coordination issue, but I I completely agree, and I can see where you're coming from. But I think it's a good idea to be able to support. Um, yeah, like a like a stack of keys that are automatically rotated through or pre-generate them. I mean, I all those. Um, there's also there should be an endpoint where you can go and get keys. So maybe we can automate some secure way of handing them off and generating new ones. Although that seems like a not one that we would like, and probably not one that you guys would like either. But I'm just throwing these ideas out there. It's, Absolutely, and and the finale time. time being quicker obviously helps a lot more. You can react and try to get it into the chain. The biggest other issue has always been when even on my entire network would think it's in sync or it's fine. You know, I mean, it's responding and accepts it no problem. It's just the rest of the world that needs that information never gets it. And it's really hard to know, you know, you're constantly doing these cross validations to you know, nations or sphere to say, how are they doing? <laughs> Compare me to right. them. Oh shit. Something's not right. <laughs> so, so you kind of got it. It's very a subjective view of things on any type of monitoring, you know, and reaction type of thing. So, and I, I don't have the magic answer to that, but, um, those are just two big issues that have driven obviously with the block production keys. And I would equate these similarly. It sounds like management wise yeah 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 you know that's a good point on knowing whether you're in sync what error message you might see what that experience might be if things are off um yeah. the node accepts it and says sure i'll send it somewhere nobody got it too bad <laughs> isn't there something in uh send transaction two that like uh you know part of that whole retry doesn't it wait to see it in in an actual block that's produced um, potentially by someone else before it returns that you have different options like wait for certain handoffs or wait for even lib like wouldn't that like kind of be a result you can count on I don't know yeah, count I'm, on. I mean you would retry for a certain amount of times a certain amount of frequency but I would I mean unless your internet comes back within that time frame you'd still run out of time I think but yeah I mean that would help Right, but it'll you only get a response point. then, at that case, as opposed to indicating success. Yeah, uh, you broke up a little, Kevin. But... Well, in in that case, it would indicate uh, failure and not indicate success. So if you use the send transaction two with you know uh, a configured yeah. number, like you know it, it it will it will return failure if if it doesn't see it uh, re um, arrive in a block. Yeah, so there's multiple failures. There is like a hard failure when it's just not going to retry any more resources or whatnot. And then there is also like kind of like where you specify at what state you want to get the result back. But if it doesn't make it, my understanding is, yes, you do get an error. So at least you have like a, a confirmation. Like if you do get the correct response, you know that it made it to whatever state you, you set it in the, in the post. Uh, yeah, I didn't the answer. That, that might well just be lib. Because, um, you know, once we have instant finality enabled, live sort of be so quick, I mean, you might as well just wait for live. No, they're going to be faster than any handoff. So, <laughs> valid point, valid point. So, yeah, I think that may be part of the answer on that is whatever your recovery mechanism is, needs to use send transaction two and then also do an error handling of keep checking it and come back to it anyway. But yeah. Well, there's going to be one async call. You're not like checking or anything. You're making one async call. And when it finishes, you're going to have your final answer. You're not retrying the node itself, like with retry and try to reinclude it in a block and all that kind of stuff. I get it. Says, says the developer, I'm trying to think of how my bash script's going to do it by firing <laughs> curl command or something, but, or Cleos, right, Cleos. Anyway, so. Yes, that that definitely would 
probably help with that. But those were the, really the two main issues uh, was the time to react, live, and then just being able to know whether it worked and respond accordingly. All right, try Ross's note if mine didn't. I do remember there was something um, at some point that I tested and it was working, but I heard there was complications and might never make it into production, which was this ability to provide multiple keys, uh, multiple signing keys for a producer, and it will auto, like, even if the two machines received it, like the first one who signs the block uh, will make sure the other one doesn't double sign it. I don't really recall the full details, but I remember there was a feature like that that at some point was implemented in the code. There were those extra keys, but I think from what I remember was it was a different feature. We all were like, hey, multiple signing keys. And they're like, ah, no, something about ledger or something. Is that what you're talking about? No, no, no. It was producer signatures. Uh, I think I know what you're talking about, but this is something else. I believe there was an ability to, when you wreck produce or something to, I forgot exactly, but there was a way to provide multiple keys and then you're able to, you know, configure different machines with them. I may be maybe wrong. Like I have so much friendly good. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Make that happen, right? After y'all finish instant finality, just square that away. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. There, I think there's there's more work <laughs> that we need to do. Uh, to I think the so we'll question keep... was there wasn't a, a defined feature. It may have just been thrown around, right? Y'all don't have some magic issue under the hood saying, "Oh yeah, we've been working on that," right? Yeah, no, we did not. <laughs> you do not but you know there are I've only been in this job for a little bit there are features in there that yeah, those little easter eggs rates. oh yeah by the way we've had BP fault tolerance for the last two years forgot to tell you guys <laughs> there, uh, the, uh, just another note there's so much stuff in in Leap 5 that we are going through and just trying to create notes on all all the features that have been put in there and it's so much that it will probably take us, you know, months just to roll out the communications of the improvements and, oh. and everything we've updated. <laughs> As Ross and I are trying to wade through the current stack of parameters just to figure out what we got. You're going to turn it all on, man. Just turn it all on. Well, nah, I think the, the parameter changes aren't going to be too much because most of the read-only stuff that we've been doing some changes for. The required config changes versus the recommended config changes. And I say that as this is the bigger conversation we're having. And yeah, it works like a champ if you disable uh, reversible block DB size. Because it Oro doesn't like that. But oh yeah, your API doesn't respond with send transaction to or get status or any of that. Unless this and this and this and this and this and this are flipped on. So those types of things anyway. Oh. Uh I wasn't aware of that. The, the difference between what it takes to just launch the damn node, <laughs> different from Foro, you know, config change, versus all these new features and all these new options and default settings that may be a little too aggressive or whatever, right? So Ross and I have, have been chatting and I've been trying to collect a bunch of the different BPs configs and say, what all do you have? Why did you set that? If you even have a clue why, you may have just copied it. That's cool. No judgment. But what the hell do we really do and why do we do it? And then even knowing, well, when do you need to enable that? Are you going from three to four? Well, then this and this and this and this came out and these you need to turn on. So that matrix we always kind of talked about. And then, like I say, I hear 5.0 and... I added a 5.0 column, so when I start hearing some of these new features, not requirements almost, so to say, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I'm trying to think if, if anything in that list. Um, I'm trying to think of anything in that list would require uh, config changes. I'll have to go back and take a look because I don't want to get the answer the whole now. consensus protocol and, and all of that. I mean, yeah, by no means holding you to it, but yeah, yeah I mean, there's going to be things that you either need to add or should maybe add and trying to kind of assimilate all that to then be able to 
even for just ourselves, going, damn, I got to go from three to four. Oh, yeah, this is the setting that showed up. This is the setting that showed up. This is what we all kind of agreed. Uh, we should have an hour's worth of transaction history by standard. Do more if you want. You should have at least retry for 20 times or whatever. I stole those from Gray Math, but that's what they do. That's what I'll do. Anyway, um, those types of things. Yeah, I mean, on my own note, I am looking, I always do, I'm on the lookout for a config that I can steal from somebody else to test out some other other people's config. And uh, it's they're hard to find. I thought there'd be more I, it, open there's, there's, ones out there. Two mentalities. One is that you should learn it on your own and play with them all and break shit and see how it works. And the other is, you know, that if you just copy and paste configs, you never know what they are. And it's valid. I mean, there's a lot of people that have, myself included. I don't even know what some of these settings that I'm running are, but I can tell you somebody said that problem will be fixed by that issue. Um, but being able to kind of wade your way through all of those, understand what they are, what's expected, what's required. Like I say, the biggest thing is, in my opinion, things have become optional, ver which is good. Yeah. Versus things becoming, well, nope, it's on. So when you turn on, dub, uh, you know, HTTP plugin, it does everything. No, it doesn't do any of the cool shit yet. <laughs> and why? Uh, until you ask it to. And if you, so you should set these settings. Go ahead, Ross. So like last week I said, I, 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 I don't turn stuff on unless I need to turn it on. And because of this, I'm missing a few tricks here and there, you know, like some of the new features and stuff that we should, that we'd be able to offer better API services to the users consuming our service, that kind of stuff. That's what we're trying to, I, I want to turn on the stuff, the cool new features that, um, that, you know, I wasn't sure that I needed. Usually we only put things on when it fixes something for a specific reason. And that's why I said it'd be great if we had these little updates. These are the new features. This is why you should, you know, a little, little heads up and it'll prompt me to, to use it. I know Matthew. More so than wading through the release notes, you know, obviously the release. Yeah. Notes, yeah. Do a yeah. job of it, but man, it's, <laughs> yeah. Right. I just don't, I don't want to miss a trick, right? I mean, sure. It's, it, it, nothing's broken. Everything's working, but you know, there's some benefits to turning some things on. Um, and I know Matthew is pretty good at doing that. He tends to actually really battle test all of the new features um, as they come out. And well, it's Jim. I mean, I can tell you what he tells me to do. He just prints the help yeah. file out and then goes one by one by one. Um, <laughs> and I'll probably do the same thing. I'll print out 4 -0, print out 5 -0, I would do a diff on it and say, I right, what are the new ones that show up in here? But like I say, it's <laughs> so hard. And even... You know the one-liner descriptions y'all give here's what it does well what's recommended oh on a public api 10 times that well <laughs> y'all can't say that you know i mean we you know where do you usually get that so anyway we're working on trying to get all that and decipher what the hell some of these things even are but looking forward to as new features you know and kevin does a good job of well i can't say what to do but this is what <laughs> what you might. What I, I, yeah. <laughs> hey, I feel like we're having a groundhog meeting. This last trusty minutes is the same meeting we had last week. <laughs> I do that to the meetings. I'm sorry. Off the left. <laughs> Moderator should keep us on track. Can you guys hear me? I'm getting some uh, warnings that my internet connection is not stable. Am I coming through okay? Oh, your internet's been crap all all the stream, but we just we love you that much. All right. Well, hope, hopefully it's uh... fine, but it does show it's trying to reconnect. But I can see your mouse moving. Okay. Can you hear me? Is there is there yeah. noise coming out of my mouth? I can hear you. All right. I think so. <laughs> um. So I wanted to yeah take it back to the. How do we prepare for this? From what I understand, this is only impacting top 21. Is that right? These the changes in how we operate with these new signing keys, app developers, node operators that are not within consensus, not as impacted, obviously, except for when they become in consensus. So, you know, maybe something that top 30 need to be in particular paying attention to. Yeah, so, I, I have a question. Strictly speaking, it'd be top 21, but yes, top 30 should pay attention. Why do we need a separate key? We already have a signing key for block producer. Why can't we just use that? Uh, different signatures of BLS signature different cryptography. 
why why count one thing do two things because the bls keys support aggregate signatures and the r1 k1 keys that you use for block signing do not let me fix block signing keys to do the same thing i'm just trying to figure out how to make it more simple so that block the block producers who are not paying attention don't mess it all up because we have a lot of I mean, that producers who are not technical who just blindly follow instructions and they tend to mess things up the um I mean that that's an interesting suggestion. I'm not sure, to, to be frank, whether uh, there was consideration in terms of supporting BLS keys for for block signing. I know we're, we're currently not planning on doing that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why. It may be time. It may be other other issues there. Uh, but certainly in the future, we're at least uh, contemplating separating out um, block finalization from block production, and so. We would look to have separate keys there uh, for for those. Now, uh, again, potentially th they could be the, the the same key, I guess, if you're if you're doing both. But uh, yeah, I, I don't have an answer right now why um, or if a BLS keys could be supported for block signing. So, what what does block validation do that's different than block signing? Compute. So. Um, so in the the new consensus uh, mechanism, there's distinction made between. Uh, so in the current consensus um, mechanism, there's a combination of of things, if you will. There is the uh, there's a, the the block production, there's the the block validation, and the block uh, finalization um, for for a given for a given block. So. Now, what happens is you you produce a block, you sign a block, and you're implicitly validating the block that you're you're building upon, right? So, in the new consensus alg algorithm, you can validate blocks that um, you have not built upon. So, you can just validate them directly as they as they come into your node, and then communicate that out. So, there's a distinction there between that, that I've validated a block as opposed to that I'm I'm actually pr producing a block. And we can we could definitely even discuss that we're not talking about it in 5.0 immediate relief, but we're talking about potentially separating out those co two concepts so that if the community is interested, we could have different validators than block producers, or maybe more validators than block producers. Um, you know, it, they don't have to be they don't have to be the same thing anymore. They can be completely separate, and so um, so you have the separation there of, of, of concerns, and so. You need different keys for for those two rows. So yeah, not in scope for the consensus upgrade, but in the future we could pretend perhaps again twenty one producers and fifty validators, and they could be the the same or a completely different group of 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 uh, operators. Correct. Yeah. So in five O potentially, and you said it may not make it. Would it? All they'd be like the V1 version where maybe it is tied to the 21 hard so it, it, still. In 5.0, right, from from where we are right now, uh, there, there's no plan to separate those two concepts. Uh, I mean, we're separating them in implementation, and so we're preparing for, the, for that um, a possibility. Uh, but that's, um, that's really a decision that the community will ultimately need to make, and then we'll have to actually make some additional code changes to, to make that possible. Um, completely possible. So again, for 5.0 release, um, it, it's the same way that it is today, if you will. So a, a VP will be playing, if you will, multiple roles. They will be uh, both uh, producing, signing, and validating uh, blocks. Uh, so that 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 will be the role of the B, of the VP. Um, and currently, as as we have it, the uh, who is playing the leader in the consensus algorithm, uh, that which could also be separated out. Um, the currently the leader is following the block producer. Now that could be changed in the future as well. We could have a completely separate uh, leader. Um, we could keep a leader active until for whatever reason they go down. We could have a leader either fall by one or be one ahead in the schedule or it could fall finalizer. It could be whatever we choose. Like there's there's no reason to couple um, 
the concept of a leader, a validator, and a block producer, uh, those three concepts can be completely separated in the new consensus algorithm. Um, now, I think the first yeah. thing for 5.0, those will all be combined in, in the block producer. Yeah, I think the first thing that like after 5.0, the first thing one might be interested in doing is, like you said, is separating the leader because that would have like an instant effect on when it, when somebody's down, you no longer have to wait that uh, time. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Like currently the way it, it, it's uh, tied in with the producer, I think is less than ideal uh, because of the exact scenario you just talked about that, you know, if, if a block producer is down, um, if you had a, had a leader, you could actually you could actually switch. The other kind of really cool thing about the new algorithm is like uh, we could now again none of this in five zero, but we're we're building it and getting us where we can go there and you know um, in the future is that if a block producer is down for a round, like you could switch to a different block producer and not miss a complete round. Uh, so that could be a part of the the, the new uh, consensus when we have it in place. There's no reason to wait a, a full six seconds uh, of no block. We could say, hey, this block producer is down. Let's switch to an or let's switch to a backup. Um, and, uh, or uh, any series of, ba of backups. Like it doesn't even have to be a single backup. It could be many, uh, like people could then like um, buy for that uh, ability to be the, the the one that produces the block. And there's 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 no problem with, with that scenario. So there's well, kind of really read cool here. things that can happen. Or you could register your BP and your backup BP both, and then maybe the yep. like the algorithm would know to. Yep, exactly that. The other one. Yep, exactly that. So that's all stuff not in 5.0 because you know step steps here. We got to get the consensus algorithm out the door, <laughs> you know, which we're working on doing. But it opens up all kinds of really cool possibilities in the future on where we can go um, to even a, a more robust system than we have today. Cool. And those would all be things that we could be changed with MSIGs, I presume. We need to get the block producers. Who who is Which is the role that I guess determines now we have three different roles. Um, which of the roles is responsible for approving these types of changes in the new consensus? Uh, I, yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, it, it would be the, the block producers uh, um, still for any sort of multi six sort of thing because they're the ones that's actually producing the blocks. Um, I guess somewhat finalizers because off, obviously they're the ones that ultimately are going to, you know, approve of, of, of the blocks. Uh, but presumably that role will just continue to be as long as the, the block meets uh, consensus parameters, it's going to be validated, you know, Hopefully we don't get into a situation where validators are like, you know, arbitrarily not validating blocks because of, you know, they didn't like the the list of transactions in them. <laughs> right. uh, or something like along those lines. But uh, yeah, um, uh, it'd still be the, the, the block producer. So in a scenario in the future where we have these rules separated as producers and finalizers, then on the next consensus upgrade comes, would, and let's say we got 21 producers and 100 validators, um, it's the producers still that would have to sign an MSIG to activate the new consensus features, but the validators would have to execute that transaction. But would they even be involved in the MSIG? And maybe we're getting too ahead of ourselves. But I mean, the, ultimately, a validator validates a block, right? And so, uh, if uh, currently today, that's simply consume a block, and if it meets consensus, um, uh, then then it's considered validated, right? So there, there's not any logic there to like be, um, uh, what would be the term to 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 have an opinion about that. <laughs> uh, right. So um, yeah, so it would it would be the the BP's whose job it would be to to call. Cool. Now going back to five <clears throat> this won't be the case. The right. only thing that we need to be uh, aware of is okay. Now we have a new key. And we have to manage that key probably differently than what we're doing today. Um, do the BPs on this call have a good grasp based on what the conversation we had here? What is the impact to how we operate 
Um, how disruptive is this change to the way that we operate? And you know, how much care are we going to have to you know, to to Matthew's point that you know this is something we're going to have to communicate to all the top twenty one BPs, whom some are more or less engaged and in, and in tune with the intricacies of the technology. Um, how disruptive will this be for those and and us? And um, what what do we need to do to close the gap there? Yeah, I can tell you it it impacts us the same way it impacts Michael, right? Because currently the the way we manage keys on block production is we just move the key between nodes. Right. Well, I'll say this: I mean, definitely don't have a good grasp on it. But in all fairness, because there's not a lot of documentation out and really all the details wouldn't you know expect to have a good grasp to really be able to but i mean i understand and i'm excited about the new features and architecture but yeah i mean once we can start seeing i mean what is it like is it really just simply i need to manage two keys and yes i move this key to this server and this key now and i comment them out you know i mean it may be a little impactful but it may not be detrimental or is it not even possible to do it that way? And now, yeah, we've got to figure out whatever. So the more technical details, maybe an RC, and I, here's what you're expected to set. How does that fit in? Um, I mean, I, I assume it'll be, for most people, adding a few configs to their 5.0 BP with this new key that they're going to have to learn how to generate. <laughs> You know, so yeah, but also when you switch from primary to backup, you have to generate a new key. Is that actually the case, or can we move a key one toward the other? That's why I say, I mean, without knowing for sure, but I that I don't know how disruptive it'll be, but it's probably yeah. be disruptive. A, you've got a new thing to manage, and B, it sounds like it's not the same logic. I think the answer to the question there, Dan, is that we actually just need some more detail on how this works. And then we can tell you. If, uh, we, but I mean, does the key do, how do we manage the keys? You know, let's just get solid information in front of us and yeah, and we can tell you how disruptive it's going to be. Right. If, cool. if at all. Yeah. And Michael asked a question earlier about, you know, is there a specific permission for this key? Because, you know, that tells us or could it use some type of you know mechanism like that correct yeah yeah I, I don't know if it requires or just piggyback or because that also yeah. thought was that right now it's all the bps and yeah i mean we could you know yeah you're signing key or something like that but if you start getting 100 different validators you know i mean are they all just because that's one thing that i know a lot of our bps that are you know living and dying in this the first thing they do with their block signing key is go and add it to their account as some random key you know because you would think it needs to be associated to an account, but no, 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 it's just registered off in La La Land, right? You know, so I was curious if it fell back into the natural structure of permission or could. Anyway, I think it's an important question because it goes to the security of that and how things get managed, right? Because the person who controls the block producer is not necessarily the person who runs the nodes. And so the permit, the permission of the doing this node transfer needs to be different than the person who has the key to run the block producer. I, I will say, yes, we have dedicated keys with only the unreg permission that our minions that are out there have access to be able to right. at least unreg, maybe not even re-reg, but you know, that, but I mean, that's not, it still uses the permission structure. It's just what action you're calling. But yeah, I mean, I'd assume there's going to be some sort of action to register a new validator key that, that could be utilized. Anyway, yes, let's see how it goes. Let's see what you come up with. I'm happy to, if there's a magic under the hood draft that I need to keep my mouth shut about, happy to look at it and give you some feedback and whatever yeah. that would help. I was going to raise this here. So uh, Eric, I think you mentioned that there is an open issue to document this stuff. Uh, I'm not sure if you can speak to when we might expect a, a, at least an early draft of that document. I think we got a great audience here who can help make sure, you know, give give feedback on have all of the questions we have been answered in this documentation, and do we understand it clearly enough that we're confident in being able to share this with again the rest of the top 21 and any any other node operator. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, I don't uh, I don't have a date. I have to go back and talk uh, with Brian and some other folks about priorities uh, because we're all busy right now. So we just got to get the make sure we got the priorities right. And then in dates. Well, I guess my feedback is if you want feedback on how pause, resume and other things work, then you need to do this first to get the feedback on how this works. So that we, you know, informs how the other features are. Uh-huh. Brian? Okay. We only have a few minutes left. Any, any other questions or thoughts on this topic? If not, I was going to hop in and uh, chime in just on the topic of feedback. Uh, here recently, Jonathan Gisek did just a uh, merge in a PR related to some of the P2P improvements that are working in the background. So if anybody has some idle time and wants to provide feedback on the current metrics we're reporting on to date, um, that would be definitely valuable prior to the release. This is obviously like much, much lower priority than what's being discussed, but figured I'd squeeze it in in these last uh, two or three minutes. Um, so feel free to take a look at that PR. And if you're curious about um, what those historical discussions were like around this topic, uh, you can see the larger product issue uh, linked there after in the chat. Um, so any feedback on that would be great. I think also we're probably going to get, let's say, at least 80% of the work scoped inside of this likely in the release at this point. Um, there may be some of those lower rung items you see uh, listed as cusp inside of that second link that may not make it in at this time. Thank you. And uh, for those who missed it, Stephen shared some links to the GitHub's pull, re pull requests here and issues. All right. And then I guess the other, the, taking it back to where we started with the disabling of deferred transactions, again, that's coming in hot in the schedule here. We plan to start disabling on Jungle in Kylan on the 28th, which is a week, less than a week from now. Um, so again, as soon as that article is published on the blog, we can start circulating this in the Jungle and Kylan channels. Um, like I said, I'll touch base with, uh, uh, with Ralph offline and, um, it was also Randall. about developing like a script to fire off deferred transactions to see who all might still be doing them. Are y'all, is somebody tackling that or? So I do see that assigned to Eric here. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and that's slated for. Uh, to run it here on September 1st till the 8th. Uh, but we also have the right script. Here we go. August 21st to the 29th. Is that on track here? It says not started, but... Um, no, that's not on track. Should we be changing these any of these dates? Uh, what's today? The 23rd. 23rd. So it's this 21st. Um, well, it can't be the 21st, um, because it hasn't started That's, yet. Yeah. So seven and eight would have to change. And then I haven't thought about how much time we need, uh, for that. Um, okay. I don't need to I answer right now next week, but we'll need yep. to, yeah, we'll need to adjust here and, um, yeah, the downstream implication of that will be obviously the running of the scripts, um, which is 12 and 13. So, and the, yeah. again, for context, the purpose of those is um, basically as a sanity check so that we can easily tell whether uh, folks are um, submitting deferred transactions and whether folks are executing deferred transactions. As a product. No, so you have a good test or not. Yep. Yeah, okay. uh, those timelines are a little bit long for those, so we can short those up. Cool. Back on track. So I'll, I'll catch up with you offline to see how, how this these dates need to adjust and if there's any downstream impacts too. Um, all right, we are at time. Um, I'll... I'll 
one more opportunity. Any final thoughts on any of the discussion today before we break um, and catch up again next week? All right. Have an awesome day, guys. And um, yeah, we'll uh, share in all the channels as soon as the, uh, the communication is ready and, and we can start spreading to our respective communities. Have a great day, everybody. Cheers, everyone.